Well, we finally made it to Davis Bayou, didn't we? Yes! Woohoo! <laughs> finally. <laughs> we originally had two weeks booked there before Hurricane Delta. It's back in October. And then Hurricane Delta changed everything. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the, the campground was closed and we had to re reschedule, move north. <laughs> All that good stuff. All that fun stuff. <laughs> but anyway, we were there for about a week. Do you remember the dates that we were there? At, uh, uh, at Davis Bayou, uh, uh, we checked in on December the 7th. No, mm -hmm. December the 10th. Aha. Uh -huh. And checked out on December the 17th. We uh -huh. were there a week. Yeah. And uh, we really enjoyed our stay there. Uh, they have roughly how many sites? Uh, they have 52 sites. Okay. And as far as I can determine, they all have 50. 50, 30, and 20 amp electric, and mm -hmm. they all have water at the site. Yeah. Some of the sites are a little shorter than others. Um, some of them, you know, I don't know how you would get a really big rig in there, but yeah. <laughs> I, some of them did. Yeah. <laughs> Campground itself was very uh, clean, well maintained. Oh, it's absolutely. actually not a Corps of Engineer campground. No. no. It's actually a national. It's part of the uh, National Seashore. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, we've always thought that this was a core park, but it isn't. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, it is a federal park, though. And, of yes. course, because it is a federal campground, the same uh, discounts apply. So what was our, uh, what, how much did we pay per night there? We paid $11 a night mm -hmm. um, for the 50 amp with water. Dump station was really close by where we were, very centrally located. Yeah, and it's fairly, you might as well say it's close by to every site there because it's right pretty much in the middle of the campground. And the campground itself is not really spread out. It's all kind of tightly yeah, set together. It, you, you know? it, you're a little closer to your neighbors than mm -hmm. what we normally experience. Um, and but you know you meet some very we met some awesome oh awesome yeah a lot of people yeah. <laughs> well i guess cargo conversions are unique yeah but well that and we did have uh, at least one other gentleman with a That's cargo right. conversion that came there to the campground yes. while we were there yes and uh, he just had to see ours and brought his and then went and got his wife and brought her back over to see it too <laughs> so we had a lot of fun showing them the the camp yes. the uh the cargo yes. conversion and we had a couple of ladies very interested in our gazelle yeah we and did ask us all kinds of questions about that and the beauty of being outside in the campground you can visit yeah. easily and still maintain a social distance um den and his wife came to visit den the cockeyed camper came to visit <laughs> and uh den is and we talked about him last time and then we said oh we have to wait for to see his uh <laughs> photo this time but yeah den the cockeyed camper is a real hoot he's constantly cracking jokes all the time and we got to meet his uh his wife uh, renata and she was just as sweet as could be absolutely yeah yeah, Absolutely. for sure. Of course, that, that usually goes, you know, oh, yeah. sweet wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when the husband's a character, they yeah, have to have, have a sweet wife, have a right? Sweet wife. Is that right? <laughs> so I guess you're trying to say that you're sweet because I'm a character? Well, yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's a given. <laughs> I didn't realize I was a character. You can be. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, some more about the campground itself. Now, they, they also have a um, very large day-use area with lots of pavilions. And what's really struck us both about it is how well-maintained it is. And it's really like a manicured park. Yes, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That, that part was, it was very beautiful. And if you like to ride your bicycle, uh, it's very easy to ride your bike in that. And, of course, you can ride clear up through the day-use area as well. You can go way beyond that if you want. And another neat thing about it is there is a dedicated uh, walk, walking slash bike trail that turns out of the day-use area and takes you directly into Ocean Springs, Mississippi, which is a gorgeous little town. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can ride your bike from the campground to downtown Ocean Springs. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so, well, I want to go back there when we can start hitting some restaurants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And they have tons of restaurants in the uh, Ocean Springs area. And then, of course, when you're riding along Highway 98, you know, you go through Biloxi, Mississippi, which is where all the casinos and everything are, the Hard Rock Cafe and all that. And then, of course, you can go on, eventually end up at Past Christian and beyond. And we did take a drive up through there on... Um, 
I think it was on Sunday, and it was a little foggy that day, and yes. I do have some footage of that. Yes. So you can see where the where the fog was rolling in uh, off of the ocean onto the beach there. And uh, in a way, it was kind of cool. It was very it really, cool. Yeah. I enjoyed that. For sure. Always. And <laughs> another neat thing, you're so close to several things that uh, you may need as far as a Lowe's or uh, Walmart Supercenter is fairly close tractor by. Tractor Supply. Yeah. We get our propane at Tractor Supply, so that's always convenient. <laughs> there was an O'Reilly's uh, Auto Parts yes. store nearby, very nearby. And we and needed a new air filter, so yeah. that worked out handy. Yeah, yeah. Stopped and got me a new air filter there for the van. So anyway, we, uh, we really enjoyed ourselves there. I don't know what else we can say about it. There's a... It was our fourth stop in our journey. That is true. I forgot um, to mention that, yeah. You know, we, we told you we're, we had this journey laid out. This was our fourth stop, mm -hmm. was at Davis Bayou. And, um, of course, that's a great place. Like you said, we stocked up on groceries and different things so that we could continue our journey. Most of the time while we were there, the temperatures were really, really pleasant. Most of the time. Yeah. Except we had the a, day we wanted to go kayaking. Except, yeah. Yeah, AccuWeather told us it was going to be in the 70s that day, and we were all excited. And then no. <laughs> AccuWeather backtracked on us and said, no, things are no, changing. No, no, so no. So <laughs> we did have a couple of days where it got a little windy and a little nippy, but for the most part, the weather was quite pleasant there. We just had so many things uh, that we needed to get done while we was there. We only had one day set aside to go kayaking, and it didn't work out. We thought we had um, looked at the weather and made the correct decisions. Yeah. But <laughs> now, they did sustain some damage during Hurricane Delta there. Yes. Uh, as far as the campground itself is concerned, uh, everything is all put back together. But through the bayou area there, through the, uh, the whole national park area there, um, they do have these uh, boardwalk trails that take you out through the bayous and places like that and the boardwalk trail sustained a lot of damage so right now they're closed right they yeah. evidently had a lot of storm surge mm -hmm. and i think the campground host told us they had 60 some trees down yeah they lost 64 trees and, yeah. a, and a word of warning when you go to this campground they actually have a gate that closes at sun sunset that's correct and now after you check in, they give you a code that you can push in and get in after sunset, but they have a locking gate, and I think it doesn't open till seven in the morning and closes at sunset, whatever yeah. that happens to be. And when right. we were there, that was like five, five thirty in the evening. Yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, but in another sense, that gives you a real sense of security because no one else can get in or out mm -hmm. as well, unless they are a camper. Now, we yep. were staying at number nine, mm -hmm. and we drove through, of course, like we like to do, and pick out other options mm -hmm. in case, you know, when we come back, we can have a selection. We liked number two. We liked nine, of course, was good. Ten was good. Twelve. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. And thirty-eight. Fifty-two is not bad, but a word of caution, that's right next to the dumpster. Mm -hmm. And... In the heat of the summer, you might not want to park right next to the dumpster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Because of the flies. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, uh, we probably will return there again someday. For one thing, we really, really do like uh, the city of Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Yes. We just like that area so well right in there. You know, lots of things to do in the area. Um, and, you know, if you're into kayaking or fishing or something like that, they have a really nice... Uh, uh, boat launch area in the bayou itself, which eventually you can get out to the ocean from there if that's what you that's want to do. That's why we were wanting to, well, we yeah. weren't wanting to go into the ocean with No, bags, we just wanted to <laughs> paddle up, you know, to the, you know, towards the ocean and come Turn back. Turn come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've also got our expenses up to date. That's right. That's right. I guess we need to talk about them, don't we? Yes. Um, remember, we left Northwest Arkansas November the 30th, and this is through December the 17th. Okay. Uh, we're setting at a total of expenses, $1,353.38. Of that, of course, car maintenance for when we had our breakdown and then we bought an air filter and we bought a spare tire for the trailer because we damaged our spare tire right. during our night of horribleness. Yeah. <laughs> um, so our car trailer and maintenance was four forty four forty nine. dollars Park rent so far is $190. Two 
248.86 on fuel, 254.35 on groceries. Of course, I had stocked up before we started this deal. Um, our sales ser service at this point was $75. We have two sales services so that hopefully if one doesn't work, the other one will. We have Verizon and we have T-Mobile. Mm -hmm. um, so far to date, we ate out for $44.07 because we don't eat out much. We did do laundry and mm -hmm. that was, um, we managed to go two in almost two and a half weeks. Yeah. <laughs> And I had a clean shirt every day. Yes. Yep. <laughs> well, laundry was $16. And the beauty of going to the laundromat and doing the laundry is hour, hour and a half, we're out of there. In and out, done. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about it for another two weeks. And then, of course, we had to have a little bit of alcohol. And so far, we, had, we have spent $73.88 on <laughs> alcohol because, you know, you got to have that when you're traveling. <laughs> Uh huh. I, I guess you do. I guess you do. But uh, you know, if it hadn't have been for the for the breakdown we had, which it totaled uh, almost four hundred dollars just that one day, you know, when we had to replace right. the water pump and everything, uh, the figures would look a whole lot better. But even still, uh, we try to what we're trying to do is uh, travel like we travel, and still not go beyond what we draw on Social Security. That that's our whole. That's our goal. Point of this, the goal of this. Yeah. And uh, you know what the national average is. Everybody tells you what the national national average is that people draw on Social Security. Well, believe me, we are not part of the national average. <laughs> no, at we're all. a little bit. We're quite a bit less. Quite than a bit that. less than that. <laughs> Between the two of us together, and we're not going to tell you exactly how much we draw on Social Security, but after Medicare, we draw a significant, significantly less than two thousand a month. So our whole idea about doing this is to be able to travel on just what uh, we draw in Social Security. Well, we wanted to be able to live yeah. on what we draw in Social Security. Exactly. If we had stayed in a sticks and brick, yeah. one of us would have had to continue working. Right. And right. that's not our no. retirement dream. Not, not part of our plan. <laughs> and, you know, we've got to see some beautiful things and uh, been to some gorgeous places. And, and met some uh, awesome people. And met some awesome people and uh, some, you know, you just don't get to do that as sticks and bricks, especially if you've got a, one of you's got to keep working in order to keep no. maintaining everything. Exactly so anyway, uh, even still, we feel like uh, by the time the uh, end of the month rolls around and we've actually been on the road for a full 30 days, we feel like that we're still going to fall real close to, even though we had that one major expense, we feel like we'll fall uh, fairly close to uh, to being able to do this on our Social Security on a monthly basis, you know, and uh, barring we have no more major breakdowns. <laughs> why did you say that? I know. Shouldn't have but said why that. Why would you say that? Knock on wood. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I don't know what else to say right now. No, do you? No, no. But we're having a really great time, and we're hoping to meet some of you on the road. Yeah. And we will do that. We have a few things lined up in the future. We got something that's kind of brewing in the background. And uh, if it uh, becomes reality, uh, it'll be pretty cool. But uh, we will kind of keep you informed on that and we'll see how things go. All righty? Yep. Anyway, this is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventures. And we are not camping. We're living. Absolutely. Y'all take care. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye now.